All right, so the first part, I've done some research with regards to toxic people, but can't seem to wrap my head around how to go about a situation where the individual is too toxic. This is one of those words that has lost its meaning. Toxic, toxicity. Along with narcissistic and gaslighting, this word has lost its meaning. People have taken this word and stretched it so far. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. I kind of get the idea. Definitions are pretty darn important. Go back to episode 124. I did a whole episode on definitions. Uh, to Give that one a listen. But it's, it's super important. We have to have accurate definitions to then build concepts from. So we cannot discuss what too toxic is without first discussing what toxic is. So what I want to do here is actually a bit different. Rather than defining it, I want to neutralize the impact of the word because if, we're, if we get wrapped up in who's toxic or too toxic, then we might lose sight of the behavior and focus instead on judging that person or, or giving them this broad sweeping label. And really in these situations where someone may be too toxic, we got to kind of drill down if they can define what is it that they are doing? What's the behavior that is not working for us? So basically, I want to neutralize the impact of this word altogether. What is it about these people in your life that's toxic? Take the judgment and the label out of it. What are they doing specifically that is toxic? Is it the whole person? Probably not, right? Or maybe it is. Is it the whole person or is it one aspect? Is it a piece of their personality? But what are they specifically doing? that has earned them this label from you. It can't just be because you don't like them. It can't just be because you feel angry at them. Toxic is a judgment. The behavior is closer to fact. And I guess factually someone could be toxic as well. But when we drill down to the behavior, we're getting more concrete. We're getting more, we're getting closer to, more closer to what they're actually factually doing and not a judgment of who they are. Maybe they deserve the judgment, but that's not what we're talking about here. A behavior is something that you can create a line for. A judgment, not so much. It's a lot more gray. And then you start to ask questions about, well, how much toxicity is too toxic? But a behavior, you can start to create a line for it. You can lay out, this is okay in my life and this is not okay. This I'll tolerate, this I will not tolerate. You can get a lot more crystal clear, I think, with behaviors than just the general umbrella term of toxic or narcissistic. So let's get even more specific. Maybe the behavior is lying. And specifically, you know, they're doing something to get you to believe an untruth or something that's not true in order for them to benefit in a selfish way. So they're benefiting at your expense by telling you giving you inaccurate information. Let's call that lying, selfish lying, malicious lying, whatever you want to call it, but it's lying. Okay, that's the behavior. Now in your life, generally I think we can say that lying is not good. Generally we can say that lying should not be a part of our lives. We deserve to have access to the truth, that each of us has a right to truth as close as we can get it. And what I mean is like, let's say we have a husband and wife. And the wife has access to a piece of information that the husband should know, like whether or not she's going to go and sleep around with somebody else. The husband has a right to that information, right? I think generally it's, and it's not even a husband and wife thing, it's more of a spousal thing. The other person has a right to that information. They have a right to clarity about their relationship that they signed on for. And marriage is very much a contract. I hate to take the romanticism out of it, but it really is. So if if someone has, if one part of that relationship has decided to break the contract of what they agreed upon before going into the marriage, or to just sort of break that person's trust, let's just be very simple like that, not even a contract, but just their trust as part of a mutual shared loving relationship. If you're going outside of the norms of that relationship, the other person has a right to know that, especially if they ask, you know, are you cheating on me? They have a right to an honest answer, even if it's a difficult answer for that person to give or for that other person to receive. 
uh, they have a right to to honesty, to truth. So we could say generally that lying is no good. And that might fit into some toxic kind of behavior, right? Probably. But that, that is a specific behavior. Lying is pretty darn specific. And again, you might go into scenarios of, well, wouldn't it be okay to lie in this situation, in that situation? That We're not going there. We're, we're just talking about it in general. That each of us has a right to what is true, generally. That's the point, though. It's a specific behavior. What behavior are you not willing to have be a part of your life? Whether it's a relationship, a friendship, a work, professional kind of relationship, maybe. What are you okay with? Uh, what can you put up with and what can't you? And yeah, I would recommend try and make it that crystal clear, that black, black, that black and white. 